Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see various types of loads. Those loads which are likely to act on a structure or which are subjected to the structure over the structure in their lifespan. What kind of loads are expected on a particular structure as a designer? Which type of loads you should consider? All these types of loads will be taken in this video. So let's start with the video. <music> See what is a load first of all let me tell you what is a load see the external forces acting on a body are called loads okay those external forces which will be acting on a particular body whether the body is of steel structure whether the body is of RCC structure no matter but whatever are the external forces maybe UDL maybe point load maybe dead load maybe live load see it may they may you may categorize them as per their actions whether it is bending whether it is uh, vertical load whether it is udl that is depending upon how it is getting acted or depending upon what type of uh, load is it whether it is dead load live load so all these are nothing but loads okay and the si unit of load is the newton so first classification of loads is according to the effect produced on the body how will they produce the effect on the body so depending upon that we will classify the loads so the first type of load is the tensile loads now what are tensile loads see the loads which tend to increase the length of member in the direction of applied loads are known as tensile loads what does that mean see in this diagram here the load is applied in this direction means it is stretching this body in this direction in this direction and from this it is stretching the body from in this direction so after the application of this load the body will also increase or the length of that body will also increase in the same direction as the applied load so that type of load which will increase the length of body but it will be in the direction of the load applied load that will be called as tensile load so that is the definition of tensile load now the second type of load that is compressive load so how you can define this see the loads which tend to decrease the length of a member in the direction of applied load are known as compressive loads as you can see in the picture here this load is applied in this direction it is towards the body if it is towards the body what will happen to this body or the structure or the member that member will get reduced its length will get reduced so that type of load which will reduce the length of member or the body or the structure that type of load will be called as compressive load and the third one is the shearing load the loads which tend to slide off uh, one face of the member related to other are known as shearing loads what does that mean if one plane of a body or the member is sliding over another face or one face of the body is getting slide over another that type of uh, load is known as shearing load so this is the type of loads which will create the effect let me see uh, let me tell you one more see next one is bending load see these are the loads which tend to a certain degree of curvature or bending in the member see as you can see here this type of loads what they will create they will create certain degree of bending see they are getting bent here means they will create certain degree of curvature or the bending in the member then those type of loads will be called as bending loads then we have twisting loads now as the name says twist so they will twist or rotate the body so that loads which cause or those loads which cause or tend to rotate one end about its longitudinal axis see it says longitudinal axis means along the length like this this is your longitudinal axis so along the length if it is getting rotated then it is called as twisting load it means that load which is causing this twisting or the torsion which is also known as torsion that's why i have entered torsion here so that type of load will be called as twisting loads now let's see other classification of loads see this is the classification of loads according to their application on the body how they are applied over the body 
so basically they have two types first one is the dead load and second one is the live load so let's see first the dead load see the loads which have magnitude direction and point of application they are fixed for a given member then they are called as dead loads see we will on also see another definition of dead load but it is according to the classification according to their application how they are applied over the structure of the body so as per that i am making this dead load definition see these are those loads which which have their magnitude whatever is the amount let us consider 20 30 whether whatever is the unit 40 50 then direction downward or upward whatever it is and point of application at a particular point means they will not even move from this point to this point means point of application will be fixed then direction will also be fixed it will be in downward direction only and its magnitude will also be fixed 20 30 whatever is the value so those loads will be called as dead loads now let's see live loads see the loads which have no magnitude direction and point of application fixed means their magnitude direction and point of application will not be fixed for example movable loads so those loads will be called as live loads and we will also see another definition of dead loads and live loads in this video only see people and moving furniture are the result of live load here so i have given that example now the classification of loads according to shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram see we have you may have seen all the types of loads but you will not you will not be able to classify them that's why i am classifying them depending upon how you are going to use it whether you are thinking in thinking or you, whether you are taking it from the point of uh, shear force and bending moment whether you are taking from the point of intensities so depending upon that i have classified this load so depending upon the shear forces and bending moment diagrams how they are taken so depending upon that we have the classification point load which is also known as concentrated loads so what is that the load which acting at a particular point or concentration over a small distance are known as point loads as you can see here at a particular point they they are getting acted and it is denoted by generally p or the w and its symbol is downward arrow like this then we have distributed loads see the distributed loads are those loads which act over a considerable or the measurable length of the member are known as distributed length are called a distributed loads not lengths okay so what does that mean see if a particular load is getting applied over a measurable distance measurable distance means for a particular distance one meter two meter five meter whatever is the measurable distance if they are getting applied and they are their intensity is same throughout this particular length that is known as distributed load so it is measured in per unit length then we have distributed type basically they are divided into two uniformly distributed and uniformly varying so we have seen what is uniformly distributed here it is now what is uniformly varying as the name says it will vary so uniformly distributed is the spread overly uh, over a particular span or over a half span or over the whole span of a member and they will be equally distributed or uniformly distributed that's why as the name says uniformly distributed now what is uniformly varying a load as the name says a uniformly varying load is spread over a beam which with the rate of loading varies from one point to another for example if i am drawing the load like this see from here here the intensity is something different here the intensity is something different from point to point the load is getting varied like this so if it is varying over a particular span the rate of loading is getting varied here it is something kilonewton per meter here it is greater than something per kilonewton per meter okay so that is known as uniformly varying load so again they have two types triangular and the trapezoidal one triangular i have shown you and trapezoidal one let's let's see see the triangular one the load which uh, which magnitude is zero at one end see here the magnitude is zero and here it has some intensity and it increases constantly towards the other end that is known as triangular load now what is trapezoidal one the load which is acting on a span length in the form of trapezoid as the name says it will act on a particular member or a structure in the form of trapezoid then that type of load will be called as trapezoidal load now the couple load the load which 
uh, act two equal and opposite forces act on a same span are known as coupled load what is coupled load c as you can see in the diagram here couple or it is also known as moment okay the line of action of both the forces are parallel to each other for example if there is a load like this so it will create a moment over here or here or at a particular point if the, you are taking distance also so the unit will be kilonewton meter or actually it will be kilonewton meter or kg meter or newton meter okay that is your coupled load now the next one now comes the important classification see these are the classification of loads according to how they are acting over the buildings rcc members steel structures or any other type of structures how they are getting acted over a building so depending upon that we have first the dead loads then we have imposed loads which are also known as live loads then we have wind loads snow loads earthquake loads and special types of loads such as hydrostatic pressure loads then positive uh, see hydrostatic pressure is the example of special load okay let's see them one by one this this one is very important okay so the dead loads are what these are the permanent or the stationary loads which are not moving which are not movable and which are transferred to the structure through the lifespan means they will be fixed permanently over the structure they will get transferred to the soil and they will be permanent they will not be movable as the name says dead they will be permanent only okay so dead load is primarily due to the self weight of the structure the self weight of the structure will be considered as dead load then the permanent partition walls they will also be considered as the dead load then any fixed permanent equipments which are not movable or you those equipments which will you will not move then weight of different materials also for example see at a particular here you will do the floor finishing so floor finish means that you are doing the tiling work here tiles you are providing the tiles over this okay so once you fix it you will not gonna remove it for a long span they will not be movable so those loads will come under the category of what dead loads okay what now what is the is score for that see the is code for dead load is is 875 part 1 you have to remember this and year is 1987 okay so is 875 part 1 1987 will be used for the calculation or for taking the values of dead loads okay and it majorly consists of the weight of roofs for example if you have a steel structure like this so over that you will provide certain covering material over here it may be ac sheet that is asbestos cement sheet it may be gi sheet that is galvanized iron sheet so all these materials which are permanently fixed over the structure they will be considered as the dead load so it will consider the weight of roofs beams walls columns etc and all the permanent loads then we have imposed loads which are also known as live loads so they are either movable or moving loads without any acceleration or impact they will not create any impact okay they will be just be movable loads but they will not create any impact so those loads will be considered as live loads these are assumed to produced by the intended use or occupancy of the building including the weights of movable partition or furniture they will include any movable furniture even any movable partition but we will not take it as a movable what we will do we will consider it as per meter square for example this is the area of a slab so per meter square what is one meter by one meter panel what is the live load so you will convert it into dead load itself okay so kilonewton per meter square that's why it's, uh, its unit is kilonewton per meter square you will convert it to the occupancy of the building intended life means for uh, for that particular structure in their intended lifespan what how their impact will be and how much will be the unit and how much will be the quantity of that load that you will take in the design so they will keep on changing time to time so what is the is code for that see for live load calculations the is code is is 875 part 2 and year is again 1987 okay that is imposed load now the wind load see wind load is primarily the horizontal load obviously wind will be acting in this direction as you can see in the picture here and the arrows shows this positive wind loads means they are coming from this side to this side so they are 
primarily the horizontal loads or they are also known as lateral loads okay lateral lateral means the horizontal loads lateral loads are basically two the earthquake loads and the wind loads okay so those two loads are called as lateral loads then why they are produced they are produced due to the moment of relative air over the earth now wind load is required to be considered in the structural design especially when the height of building exceeds two times the dimension of transverse to the exposed wind uh, surface now what does that mean generally you will have to consider it i, I will tell you in the in that in the simple languages in, in the simple language for example this is a building but it is high rise one okay this is the high rise building it has a very large height so for large height buildings for skyscrapers for those structures for example in case of steel structure it will be towers you may have seen transmission towers like this so for that also you will have to consider the wind loads then in case of industrial sheds also if the height is so large then in that case also you will have to consider the wind loads like this industrial sheds with truss truss systems like this for that also you will have to consider the wind loads then in case of steel water tanks also you will have to consider rcc water tanks now what is code you will be using so for wind load the is code is is875 part 3 year is 1987 this is code will be used for the wind load calculation then we have snow loads it is not very important actually uh, because it will be only considered in the places where there are chances of snowfall it will not be considered in the normal places only where there are chances of snowfall so that has to be converted and for that the is code is is875 part 4 and year is 1987 okay now the next one that is earthquake loads see they are both vertical and horizontal on acting on the building but generally they will be lateral one they will create the impact over the building when there is a ground movement for example there is a ground movement in the when there is a ground movement or ground motion due to that your whole structure will get shattered and because of that it will create impact over that particular building or the structure whether it is a steel building whether it is a rcc building whether it is steel structure whether it is rcc structure so that will create that impact but generally it is taken as lateral one or the horizontal one so the total vibration which is caused by the earthquake may be resolved into three mutually perpendicular directions usually taken as vertical and two horizontal directions means they will be considered either in this direction horizontally they will be acting in this direction and this direction and vertical also now the moment in vertical direction do not cause any forces in superstructure to any significant effect extent as i told you only these two horizontal ones will be creating the impact not the vertical one so these are your earthquake forces now which is code will be used for that so the is code is is 1893 2002 part 1 and part 2 but we will be using part 1 here so this is code is generally used for the earthquake design of a structure okay so this was the video on various types of loads that are expected to come over a structure or a building or a member thank you